Hi guys, how do you do? I'm Karen Adamski with ShamaMama.com and today is day 16 of my one video blog a day for 30 days project. So um, I'm not editing any of these videos other than putting little words across the screen, but I do everything in one take and you get bloopers and all and you see me as I am, no makeup. This is kind of what I'm doing to help myself grow. So. Uh, day 16, we've just passed the halfway mark, so we are getting there. Yay! And thanks for bearing with me. So anyway, today what I want to talk about is um, what to expect when you go to see a shaman for the first time. I've had a lot of people that are, you know, when they come in to see me there, they have similar questions about what to expect and what to do and how to prepare. Um, so I put a, like a question and answer sheet together and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll just go through it with you guys because this could be good information. So um, before I get started on that, though, I want to just remind you that when you go see a shaman, you're going to see a spiritual healer or an energy healer or a healer of your soul. So it is all spiritual work. It's not um, physical healing necessarily, although the spiritual healing plays into the physical healing and mental healing, um, you know, they all very much play in with one another. They, they merge together, but um, the shaman is the healer of your, of your spirit. So just remember that there's a lot of energy work going on. Okay, so first question, and I put this as the first question because this is always my first question, so I figure there's other people out there that have the same question. Do I have to take my clothes off? No, you don't. Um, I always, you know, anytime I go see any kind of new doctor or healer, I'm always, I always ask because I don't want to take my clothes off. So, um, if you're wondering about that, you get to keep your clothes on. That's really good. The closest thing to undressing that you might come in counter in, in that you might encounter is um, taking off your shoes and socks. So that's about it. And if you're a person who does not want somebody seeing your feet for some reason. Um, and you want to keep your socks on, you know, just let your practitioner know and they can work around it. So there's, you should never do anything that you're not comfortable with. Uh, do I need to wear something in particular? Uh, no, not necessarily. You just want to be comfortable. So sweats and a t-shirt are just fine. Uh, how do I select a shaman? That's a good question. Um, I think the best thing is to just go with your intuition. You know, if you meet somebody and they feel comfortable to you and it feels right, chances are that's a good match for you. If you meet somebody and something doesn't seem quite right or mm, there's just something that you can't figure it out or, or maybe you can figure it out, if any of that's going on, I'd say maybe that might not be a good match for you. So it's, it's just, it's your call, your judgment call. Um, I have an injury. Will I have to dance or do anything active? Uh, no, you don't have to. Again, you don't have to do anything you don't want to. Um, sometimes a shaman may dance or do a chant or kind of sway back and forth, that kind of thing. And that does not have anything to do with what you're expected to do. Typically, when you go to see a shaman, on your end, you're either just laying there, relaxing, or sitting, meditating, relaxing. Um, but not necessarily doing anything, um, you know, uh, choreographed or or um, active in any way. So you can just you can just sit. You don't have to do a whole lot of anything. Um, I'm ticklish and I don't like to be touched. Can I still do this? So yes, absolutely, you can. Um, if you are a very ticklish person, just um, let your practitioner know. A lot of the practice is hands off, um, being that it's, you know, hands may be over you, but not necessarily on you, but there is some minimal touching involved. Uh, it really depends on um, what what kind of healing you have going on. Uh, but no, it's, it's not like you're going to be tickled all over the place. But if you are ticklish, just bring it up. And if you are touched and it tickles, it's okay. You can just laugh and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, Let's see here. What else? Oh, what if I fall asleep and snore during the healing? This happens a lot. So, and that's 
kind of a compliment to your practitioner because it shows how relaxed you are with that person. And there's nothing wrong with falling asleep and, and snoring. Um, I had a healing, well, actually it was the last healing that I had done. Um, I, I heard this like mumbling sound. I'm like, what is that? And then I realized, oh my God, it's just me. I had been falling asleep and I was snoring, but then I was talking in my sleep. <laughs> And, uh, and when I talk in my sleep, I don't usually open my mouth, so it's like, <laughs> well, I was doing that, so it doesn't, it's fine, totally fine. Your practitioner will be used to it, not a big deal. Um, and you know, when you, kind of along those same lines, when you're having a healing done, it's very much a release. Uh, you know, you're releasing a lot of stuff from your body, so, so you could snore, you could fall asleep, but then... Additionally, you could um, burp a lot. You see that? You could have gurgling digestively, um, you know, tummy gurgling, or you could, you know, let out a big fat fart. It happens. <laughs> it happens to everybody. Everybody farts, and if it happens, oh well. It's just, it's normal. So try not to worry about that too much. I get it, though. If I farted in front of somebody, I'd be mortified. But I'll work on it. Um, okay, should I carry on a conversation during my session? Uh, it, you know, it really kind of depends. Um, again, there's no real right or wrong um, way of working with a shaman. So everybody's a little bit different. If you feel the need to talk during a session, that's okay. Feel free to, to do that. Um, typically, I would say if you're on the table or in somewhat of a, a meditative state, then talking is probably not the best thing. Um, although I've had patients or customers who have, um, have had like laughing, like just laughing uncontrollably or crying. You know, you work on a certain spot and they just, it just the dam breaks and it just goes. So if that happens, just do, just let it go. Just go with it. Um, but talking in general, you can just, you'll know what to do. It, 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 you'll, well, and a lot of times if your practitioner is in a shamanic state of consciousness, which they will be at, at times, um, and what that means is that uh, they have kind of one foot in an altered state of consciousness and one foot uh, here uh, in our human state of consciousness. So they're kind of walking that line. And it, as a shaman, you learn to balance that. But depending on where you are and what you're doing, if if you have a client that's talking to you when you're in a shamanic state of consciousness, you may not even hear them. So if you if that's you, if you're talking to your practitioner and they don't answer, just just don't take it personally. Just then know that they probably either can't answer you at that moment, or um, they didn't hear you, unable to hear you. But you can save your questions or whatever it is that you need to talk about for the end of the session. Uh, I would like to bring my child to a shaman. Is this okay? Um, absolutely. I think uh, kids are super open to energy healing of any kind um, just because they are, well, they're just more open in general. They haven't necessarily been taught, oh, that's crazy, or that's okay, or that's the best doctor for you to see, or that's, um, you know, energy work. What is that? Crazy, crazy person. You know, so the, it depends on what the child has heard, but most children are very open to it, um, and so they receive um, very easily. Uh, depending on the child, I may or may not ask the parent to stay there. Um, sometimes it's just a lot more comfortable for the child to be there, to have the parent there, um, and sometimes it's more beneficial that the parent is not there. So um, you'll probably come across that too if you have a child and, and are talking to different practitioners. Uh, they will. Um, probably tell you the same thing. Um, you know what I found is autistic kids seem to um, be very, very receptive to energy work. So it's pretty cool. It's really cool. Um, is my shamanic practice covered under my insurance? No. Um, well, I should say probably not. Um, shamanism is considered uh, an alternative healing or holistic healing type method. So. Um, most insurance companies don't cover that. Hopefully in the future they will, but at this time, no. Um, and just 
for myself and everybody's very, very different, but I don't have set prices on most of my um, services. Most of my work I do just based on donation uh, because everybody's different and I certainly would not want to turn away somebody who is wanting healing but can't necessarily afford whatever the listed price is. So, um, And I think most people who are uh, doing this type of work are open open to that. So. Um, Hopefully it you know it won't it won't kill your budget. Uh, let's see here, and this is the last question: Do shamans use special tools? Uh, yes, absolutely they do. I've shared some of mine with you in past blogs, but um, again, every shaman is different, so every shaman is going to have a different type of tool or tools. Some of them will be similar, some of them will be very unique. So um, you'll see probably rattles, drums. Um, crystals, uh, tree branch, you know, like like a tree branch with little with leaves and things on it. Um, water, um, salt, soil, feathers, sage, just a lot of a lot of natural type things. But um, they are all different tools that are used in different ways, and so. How I might use one tool, uh, I, that same tool could be used by another shaman, but could be used in a very different way. So there are definitely differences, and that's really what I love about shamanism is there is no right or wrong way. It is individual to you. Um, so that's the end of my Q&A list. I, if I've left you wondering about anything, let me know because then I can add it to my list for other uh, people who are wondering as well. I hope that this was helpful to you. Uh, so today's Friday. Have a good Friday night. Be well, be kind, and be happy. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow. Namaste.